Hey, welcome to another round of Artist to Artist. My name is Jamelia Mendez, and I'm a visual creative located in Dallas, Texas. And I like to chat it up with other artists. <laughs> Today we'll be talking to Artwork Kirk. Kirk is a traditionally trained painter who currently resides in Dallas, Texas. He'll be filling us in on everything from painting tips to art battles. So let's jump into it. Let's do it with you. What's going on? Nothing. What it do? And I've been looking forward to this little chat. Yeah. Do it live so people can see the the inside of what goes on with a, a full-time artist, the grind, all that good stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna get in your get in your art business. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the lab right now, the underground lab. Like a ninja turtle, you know, Donatello or one of them. Michelangelo. <laughs> one of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Looking for that right April O'Neil to expose some of this art over here. You know okay. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what you what you working on right now? What's that going? Oh, uh, this is a this is a commission right here for one of my Kirk collectors um, out of um, Arkansas. But um, this is his uncle. His uncle was the man in Chicago back in the day. But he's getting it for his cousin. That's his cousin up there at the top. It's just it's an acrylic portrait. I think it's by. This might be a two by three. What's that? 36 by 48? 36 by four. Okay, that's a good size. That's a good size. I see you. Mm -hmm. So what you um what size are you most comfortable working on? Is that like a normal size for you? Is that considered small or big for you? What what do you usually work with canvas wise? Um, right now. Well, see, I've been painting forever, and the first painting I did was a mural. So I'm kind of used to painting big, big. So when mm -hmm. it comes down to, like, uh, like, I like this size. This is kind of a medium size for me, you know, because I crawl on the wall like Spider-Man. You know what I'm saying? And wow. Yeah, so, but yeah. So uh, I like this size. I do. <clears throat> I get a lot of people that give my smaller sizes. You know what I'm saying? But um I like this is pretty regular right here. Did, have you ever done a mural before? I okay, I have not. Yeah. Um totally scared of it. You, scared <laughs> of it? you see me looking, I'm like, uh I mean and I've I painted big, well, it's probably small to you. I think the biggest piece that I've ever done is a forty eight inch by sixty inch. Oh uh, yeah. That's the biggest I've done. Usually 48 by 48. 30 by 40 is on my jam. I kind of like that size. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, so you do murals a lot, right? Uh yeah, at least one or two a year. <clears throat> I currently been doing these parking lot spots, you know, uh for the high schools in Texas. You know, they do that. It start, I think it started in California, but I think DeSoto was maybe the first school to do it out here. And uh, they had got me to do a parking spot out there. So that's kind of, I don't, I kind of consider that a mural, but not necessarily because it's its own little thing at a certain time of the year. But on the wild, I still usually get like two a year. I'm actually wrapping one up right now, but I kind of, they been, you know, this Corona, they, you know, uh, I ain't want that. My clients be trying to look out for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that's good. Okay, so you have regulars. Well, yeah. let me pair. So, give us some history about artwork, Kirk. Like, when did you get started? What's your earliest memory? Um, as far as being an artist, how did you start off? What were you doing? What were you into? What age were you? Yeah, I want. I want all the tea. Go spill it. Oh. <laughs> Really, I ain't gonna lie. I was just that kid. I just used to draw in the back of the classroom for real. I I didn't take an art class till like sixth grade or something. You know what I'm saying? But like I always used to draw or could draw. I remember my daddy used to save my little drawings and stuff. I'm talking about probably since I was like six or seven or something like that. So in sixth grade, that was the first time I think I had public art. And my art teacher wanted to give me some private lessons and she did. 
I won a little competition in sixth grade, but I ain't take art again until like probably 11th grade, 10th grade or 11th grade or 11th mm -hmm. grade. And the art teacher, she moved me up to the advanced class. And, uh, and that's when I started really getting some fine art <clears throat> training. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I was just a natural, I guess. So I'm just cold, you know, a blessed, but, uh, so I got a scholarship to go to an art college. I ran track. I played football. I was, you know, I was on the varsity football team, varsity track team. I just did regular, you know what I'm saying, uh, bullshit, really. I mean, uh, school. What yeah. art college, what scholarship huh? did you get? What art college did you, or did you go? Uh, I got a couple of scholarships. I, I ended up going to the Maryland Institute College or at Micah. It was like the number one. It's like the Yale of art schools or something like that, you know, like a Harvard mm. art society type thing you know what i'm saying so um that i got a lot of i ain't gonna lie <clears throat> i really wasn't even doing no work when i went up there i was on every type of probation it was at college you know what i'm saying i was i was, I was <laughs> no <nah>, for real <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i was all over baltimore and they, and they was hating on me at this school too it was kind of like you know i went up north i went to baltimore and stayed up there like four years and uh I thought it was going to be, you know, they was going to be cool, but sure. Like, you get up there with them real snooty art folks like that high-class art, and they really discriminatory, as, as free as they want to be with they like, they'll discriminate against people, too. So, I don't, you know, yeah, I, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of that going on and, and a lot of stuff that I had to learn, too, about art. But I, I really got into, like, the business art. I used to want to be an art dealer, like a curator, because I was like, man, I'm good, and all these cats good, but I I ain't got the time to be drawing and painting every day. If they ain't, ain't nobody paying for me. <laughs> Little yeah. did you know, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I that that's 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 how I got in the art game for real in a nutshell. Then I taught because you can't really do nothing with an art degree. My my pops used to be like he used to really be on my ass about how is you gonna live as an artist? You know I was traditionally trained in oil paintings and all kind of stuff. But so you okay? So you were traditionally trained in uh, yeah. oil painting as well? Yeah, like like I learned how to paint like Michelangelo. Them I slid in the dough, they let a real one in. You know they tried to get rid of me too. So a lot of my art coming out of school it was real political, real black art. You know dark. You know. Uh, I, I didn't did all kind of art demonstration. I had to take these classes. You you go to these art schools, and I suggested if if, if you go with art, apply for the art scholarships. If you gonna get loaned up, to, don't get loaned up to go to uh you know LSU or somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and take the same loans and go and try to you know pursue your dreams or whatever you feel like is your gift. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know even. I mean, I, I just know stuff that people don't know. You know what I mean? And, and it take it take a long time for stuff to come back around. But you know, uh, they gave me a lot. I learned a lot from the individual teachers. You got these classes with different people. right. So yeah. you said you were traditionally trained and you knew about oil paint and all that different stuff. So what made you um, decide to mess with acrylics mostly? Well, it's affordable, and and I can paint in acrylics like I paint in oil. So sometimes my acrylic paintings almost look like oil paintings. You know, people have yeah. to ask, is that oil? And it's really acrylic, you know, because I break that acrylic down in them layers, like that, like how you do that oil paint. But I use different mediums on my acrylic, too. I don't just go dry. Yeah, but I, I know how to print make. I done did print making, um, sculpture. I know how to do all of those things, but I, I be looking for the most simplest, affordable way to express myself. Painting does let me do a lot more things, but you know, I, I kind of learn art on all levels. You got time in college to do a lot of free art and experiment, you know, but, but out here in the real world, I had to be an art teacher for about seven years to, to survive. Then that wasn't paying enough, and I like, I might as well, I can, I can get more in a day doing it way less than that you know jack say the responsibilities of a teacher so you were art teacher back to okay so back to this is the question i want to ask you and i try to ask everybody on here for the artists that are going to be looking at this interview yeah um, 
And since you like acrylics the best, I wanted to know brands of acrylics that you use and why. Oh, do you use a mixture of things or what? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I got a favorite. I like that Liquitex. Basics is good too. But um, I ain't gonna lie, that artist love, that shit is pretty good for an acrylic. You know, you do got to lay it up though. That's what I'm saying. Like, I. It depends on how you paint an acrylics. If you paint, if you like a heavy body acrylic, you should go with the Liquitex or the basics, you know, so you don't have to put a body in your acrylic, if that makes sense, you know, because they got the body, the molding paste, and you can, so the artist loft is thin, thinner. Artist loft is kind of like glidden compared to bare house paint, you know what I mean? Right. But if you paint your faces, and you want to keep your paint thin, the artist loft is really good to keep it thin, you know, or to, to, to mix it with after you blending is it's pretty good. But I mean, like, uh, but yeah, yeah, if that helps, you know. Okay. We, we like the same kind of you know, but I, um, I paint with Walmart house Walmart ain't no good. And that Alpha <laughs> Barrel Crab stuff, we don't use that. Yeah, it dries. You bougie. Like you you bougie. <laughs> I, mean, I can't do nothing with it. Or like I, you know, people are trying to don't let nobody buy your supplies for you on a on a project either. And they say I buy the supply. I mean, you can let them if they're gonna buy what you want, but don't let them buy you know cheap paint. You know, make sure you get what you need. You know, because it, it'll take you longer with the wrong paint to achieve what you're trying to do with the right stuff, you know? And, and right. You can't really learn. You could struggle. You could be learning how to draw a face or a forest, but you're going to be struggling with learning how to paint, how you want to paint, using the wrong paint. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So what do you do in regards to blending? What's your best tip? As far as you know, because with acrylics they dry pretty fast. Yeah. Oh. Um, use a gloss gel, like um. Well, use water for sure, uh, sometimes. But I I go over my paints with a little gel gloss, so I can come back over it and, and layer it up. You know, like if you paint in the oil and you put, you know, some or something on your stuff and let it dry so you can come back, you know. I, I don't really use, some people use the thinner or the, put the mix the, uh, the medium in the paint. I don't necessarily mix medium in my paint. I put it on after I paint. Okay. So you could try that and see how it works for you or whoever, you know. But yeah, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to paint. But I'll, probably every layer that I paint, I'm going to put some gloss on top of that and then come back on it. And it's like you could thin and your blend. stuff out. Yeah. And you don't even, it's really like just painting on top of what you already got on there. Right. So if something is dark and you want to put that light on there, you can just put the light on there. And it won't mix back into your painting. It'll be like painting back on plastic, but like clear. That's, gotcha. a real, that's a real okay, that's thing a right there. I'm going to blow somebody mind when they go try that. Yeah. That's a tip, y'all, okay? Yeah, so, yeah. artists out there, you listening, you starting, that's a good tip to know, especially if you are dealing with acrylics. Yeah. So, I noticed when I was looking at your work, uh -huh. that I see that you, of course you have it, you know, in regular color, but I see that you deal a lot in non-local color, uh, like the piece that you're working on right now. You right. know, the man that's the focal point, he's in non-local color, like blue hues. Uh -huh. uh, do you consider that your signature or is it just something that you like to do? And is it harder to do that as opposed to like, you know, regular skin tone? Is it harder? Yeah, a little bit, kind of, but not really. But that's how them layers play out because I if I'm painting oils I'm gonna mix 
purple and stuff in my blue. Depending on the price that somebody's paying or can afford, I'm gonna do a lot more stuff. You know what I'm saying? But I right. mean, if I'm paying, if I'm trying, you know, it's a certain way that I paint, but keeping it, doing what I gotta do with just two colors and white, it's harder than when I'm than make, being able to mix orange and yellow and sienna and you know white and four other colors to make the skin tones. You know what I'm saying? So it's not necessarily like it's harder it's either, but it's not because I'm trying to go for a certain look, you know, and I don't use black, like, hardly at all. I am in this because I want to Okay, so hold on. Hold on. <laughs> see, so like, I don't know if you got a chance. I don't know if you got a chance to see my last interview where I was talking to uh, uh, the beautiful artist was trying to cook, and she was yeah. talking about that. She was like, she don't use black. Right. So, that's like a going theme. I um, mean, I've heard that several times. Yeah. It's so like a fine art. Give us a, little, give us a little bit more insight into why exactly you don't use black. Well, I, <clears throat> I learned that in high school, truthfully. But, but in college, it made sense when, because you can make black, but black will make something go flat. So you want to try not to ever use black. You only want to use black if you have to. Even outlining something in black will make your painting go flat instead of pop out. It'll make it pop out of that one thing, but it'll make other things go flat. So I use black like it's a color. And I use color specifically for where I want them at in my painting to make your eyes move around the painting, is what I'm saying. So too much black in one spot will get you stuck in one spot. But if I use blue, as much blue as I can, it's never going to be this black. You see how this, this is black. That's blue. I got purple in here too, but, and I feel like I already got too much black in here. But, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm go ahead and do what I got to do. See, like, up here, that's purple back there because I want them blues. Wow. So see how it kind of pop out and it just do something else instead of just being black. So you want to try to even in hair. I'll use four browns and put green and blue in somebody's hair before I use black because them colors is going to keep your paint in front and it's going to be other colors that make it that you see through the painting. And you really, when you're painting, it's all about optical illusion. You just want to make it look, it ain't how you want to look. Y'all want to go on a tour real quick? Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm a, we're going to go on a little art tour. Oh, no. right. oh, that's what we're talking about. All right, All right. Kurt giving us the tour. These two right here. This is my students. They growing up. They could. They getting some of my work too. Very nice. It's a big one. I. I. This piece was. Me, ooh, hell, hostage. I was in a toxic relationship, and I just got it back. They was holding it for ransom, but I, I mean, it's a commission, <laughs> no. But I mean, I told my people what happened. You know. So I'm back on it, but you know, I was really going in. I mean, I was really going in. I love the detail on the cards like that. Yes. That's a he a gambler. Well, I don't want to tell people business, but he a player though, you know, so he's standing <laughs> on go on the monopoly. But you know, we looking towards them hotels and not to the hood, cause that's checkers, you know what I'm saying? But we be on that chest though, you see what I'm saying? I got the chest pieces. You know, with the yeah, foot. whole storyline going on in this paint. Oh yeah, it, it sure is, you know. You know, we're going to roll the dice, you know what I mean, on the lane. Got all kind of drinks, you know what I'm saying? But see, I'll be drawing stuff from real life, you know what I'm talking about. I ain't just, you know, I'm not just going off my head. I be, you know, I, I learn how to paint people and things. That's the best way to learn how to do stuff is looking at it. But that's that theme again, the purple. So, you know, that's queens and royalties being purple. I draw people who then pass blue. And like you said, it's that my signature style. I mean, and I just was doing it, but people paying for it, so I can't complain. That's what they want, you know. So that's what. And I saw, you know, when I was going through your page, I saw that it was a common theme, and I was like, yeah. I wonder, is this intentional, or you know, oh, are no. his commissioner, you know, commissions requesting it, or just his style that he's been rocking with for a couple of minutes you know i definitely see you can do regular flesh tone but yeah i, I like the blue i like the non-local color it's way more emotional um and engaging to me i love it i'm a fan i appreciate it i got some 
some abstract stuff going. That's mm -hmm. some, Ooh, that's a lot of work in it. Yeah, these these big big. This a this is a uh like a four by three by four by five. I don't know how big that is. <laughs> but this this was a commission gone bad. Kind of not bad. It was just you know that there was a couple, and somebody had already put the bread on it. Somebody ain't come through with that other end. So now we just got to put it together and get that bread Ooh. that we were supposed to get. You did. No, I know it be like that sometimes. It be like that. So it, it's on hold too. You know. So do you have do you have any advice for um, artists that are just now starting to take commissions? And they oh, want to know the best way to do it. What can you give us a tip as far as commissions? What's the best thing to do? Oh, um, most definitely get some type of deposit. I can't tell you what you should feel comfortable with, but I know I ain't paying for nothing. And anything else I need to do my job, it's gonna be included. And enough for me to get to where I need to get to, you know, in between the back end, sort of like a rapper. You know what I'm saying? How they send you a little bit up front to perform, and then you you know you you get the rest. That's when you get there. That's kind of how you drop that deposit. I'm gonna get it popping, going live right now. These song in the like. What happens? Do you give them a certain amount of edits, or do you send them pictures in between the time? You know when you're oh, trying yeah. to mention. I mean, most most of my clients follow me, so you know. Like, I used to have to, I didn't say I struggled, but, you know, I'm not. Me, personally, when I see somebody, something that's promoted or oversold or something, it looked like a gimmick to me, you know? It looked like some a scam, almost, with some of this art that's going on. So, I, I so my clients, I'm cool. I, I mean, there's a certain level that I want to be at, but I'm cool with the people who fucking with me, despite the, say, the fact that I say fucking with me. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they know it's real, and they and and it ain't no games. I used to just go live as soon as I get my deposit, just to tell people, show people, like, no, nah, for real, I'm for real. I'm starting to get paid, this, you know, because some people, this, is, you know, a couple hundred dollars for somebody to start on something that they're not gonna have in a month, and man, you know. So I work with people. People be on different payment plans, or they'll tell me. Well, I tell them it's gonna take me two weeks to a month, or maybe even two months at this point. You know, and they cool. You know, some people that that deposit ain't really nothing. I mean, another two months that's gonna give me plenty of time to, you know. And so if they need it, they need it. You know, and right, be needing it. So how many commissions are you usually working on at a time? Like, um, what's routinely? How many do you usually like in a month's time? Do you do one a month, or is it two a month, or? It be on a, it be kind of like a roller coaster sometimes or waves, you know they come in waves. Like normally, probably three a month, maybe two paintings. But I, I got regular graphic design customers too. I do graphic design and like illustrations too. So, you know, so but painters I have to have at least a painting a month. You know, depending on the size, I might need two. You know, and. Uh, so, yeah, and then, you know, I have some graphics. Normally, I have a party or something. This corona ain't been. I done missed by three parties. I was supposed to have a big Mother's Day party. I don't know if we're going to get out in time. I'm all right. I got, I got some people that, you know, I'm just glad they held their word or they was good, you know what I'm saying, during the, during the corona club. I'm getting it all off the brush, you know what I'm saying, you know. So you've been active during uh... – the coronavirus has it affected yeah. your creativity in a negative way or did you just continue to paint and do your commissions what what yeah. was going on with you i mean yeah i didn't have to that's all i could do i'm i'm glad i had some commissions i mean i probably was wrapping up one when it started and got two more right after i finished that one and this might be one of them, and that's another one. And low key, I done had a couple of private art lessons too. <laughs> so, I got to get it in, you know what I'm saying? I can't, I mean, what I'm gonna do, you know? But 
I, I, I was supposed to have like two parties, three Mother's Day, but it ain't Mother's Day yet. So we might be able to put something together if them ladies still want to drip. But I don't know. You know, I'm ready to go. You know, but I just don't know what the law gonna say. You know, so. But yeah, I, I got to get it by any means. I understand that. Oh, this is what I want to ask you about. Yeah. Um, I paint from reference. So I know you'll probably be surprised. I've never used the grid method. I do use another method. Um, and um, I've used projectors before. But I remember seeing a video. It might have been one of your lives or one of your videos. And oh, you were yeah. like, I don't use the grid method. And I don't use projectors. Right. So I want to ask you about your process. Do you so like with this commission right here? Did you sketch this on the canvas first and no. then go in to paint it, or you just thought it sketch with the paint? I just go in with the paint. I you know I don't know if people just saw on that canvas, but you yeah. know you gotta put that just saw and put that on that canvas so them things don't so it don't get ate up over time. But then I just yeah. go straight in, you know, and then but I mean I look at a I look at a photo, you know what I'm saying. Oh, that boy good. Say that boy good. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, wait. oh no, let me stop. But yeah. So you look. So you look at your reference. So you got you got the picture of him right there. Right. You on. look at your reference and you just go in. You start painting. You just go bam, 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 bam. That's it. You show it off. Look. <laughs> by, the time, by the time somebody set up a projector, sketch their thing out. And whatever else you gonna do, I'm talking about cut the light on and all that. I'm gonna be, I, he already gonna be on there. You know what I'm saying? And then by the time you put your first nail of paint on there and try to stay in them lines and all that, or you got to go over that pencil so much time to get that sketch up, I'm gonna already be the corrector the eye, put some more stuff on there and be all in there. Cause I, I can't, I've used the projector before and that was the problem I had. As soon as I get into how I paint, the sketch and everything gone. So now I'm back to what am I back to? Just the reference. So it was it was hindering your process is what yeah, you're saying. I, I couldn't get down like I, like I wanted to get down. And I'm saying even on a mural, I I, I didn't sketch. I sketched on murals, but now I don't even sketch on a mural. Yeah, I'm gonna go straight in on a wild back up, wow. correct myself with some white paint, and go right back in. Oh, that's, I mean, I ain't got no time. Look like a huge, I, I think that's my issue with me because they're so big. I don't, my brain don't, un, but I've never really watched one from A to yeah. Z. But yeah. I always wondered, I was like, how they get the scale and proportion right that big? Like, what method are they using? Is it the grid? Is it a projector? Is it what? What is it? Just what is yeah. it? They use so you just say you can go, go up in there and you'd be like, this is what's happening. And, and yeah, correct I, the site. I done taught people how to use a projector. I've taught students and other people how to use grids. I just don't do it. But I mean, some people, like I know people who could paint forests, but they can't paint faces. You know what I'm saying? So when they get a mural gig and they want the forest with a person, they got to use a projector because they don't, that's not, that's not their bag. You know what not I'm saying? Serious. But they're going to yeah. get that money. They're not going to call me and split it up. I mean, if anybody wants to, that's cool. You know what I mean? But I mean, you know, <laughs> that's just how. So, but me personally. <laughs> what you say? I'll be there to take some of your profits. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's collaboration, right? I mean, they want you to come paint with them for free. Nah, man, let me get in that grant. You know, I can't get that right now. But you can still, you know, break some bread with an artist, you know? So. But yeah, I, I just go straight in. But um, like even but oh, this is what I was gonna say. Another thing, somebody told me this some free game. They say if you try to draw big, the bigger you try to draw, when you come back down to a smaller size, you're gonna be ten times more accurate, or your stuff is gonna look better. So pushing yourself to draw, it ain't gotta be a two story build. I can get three story build. It just be some on your wall, just be. It. You know, outside, but when you go try to use your proportional methods on a face that big and you inch them down, when you get on the canvas that you can control, oh, you're going to say, there ain't going to be nothing to manipulate a face. So, wow. Yeah, that's what they that's what they told me. That, I mean, I was, I'm like an X Men. I was trained. I went through some training. I'm talking about them people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 
So I, but like I said, I got into, that's what, how I kind of got into it was spray painting and doing little stuff, graffiti, probably when I was 16 and stuff, you know. So when I started taking classes and having to do it on paper, uh, it was just kind of easy. Yeah. It was easy. But yeah. I saw, I like to draw big. I like that shit. I like the big murals doing a face on a wall. So what was the transition from, do you feel it's a difference? Like, I remember you said when you were younger, um, you were full of spray paints, and that's kind of how you got into it, murals and stuff like that. Uh, what's the difference as far as spray paints and acrylic? Like, um, <clears throat> and do you enjoy one more than the other? I don't like the spray paint, personally. It, it's cool. Or, you know, it's... It, I, I'm I'm just as fast I'm just as fast with a brush as somebody with an air, air, aerosol can, but I'm more accurate with a brush than somebody with an aerosol can. But I can use an aerosol, but I'm gonna use it to fill in a shirt or a background or something before I really use it in a face. But and, right. and the difference is is that when I spray that acrylic or ammo from a spray can on the wall, what? But it's gonna be a hard plastic. To where if I brush on top of it, the gloss on it. But if I paint on the wall with the house paint, it's gonna dry like a plastic acrylic. And I'm gonna be able to blend in there a little bit better. Oh, I'm giving away too much game. I'm giving away too I ain't, I can't be doing these interviews. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. I need some. Cause all right, so. And then, like, I paint inside people's houses and stuff. This is what, this is what limits spray paints, you know. Because like, of the smell? Yeah, you, you gonna, I, I, I'm not, people ask, you, you do a nursery, you know, you can't people have people, babies and dogs and stuff in their house and business with that aerosol. But, I mean, I got a compressor and an airbrush and all that, but I swear that airbrush clog up and lock up so much that I spend more time cleaning off my airbrush than I do using it. So I don't okay. I have, you know what? I love the look of it, the softness. I have one. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm Capricorn. I just don't have the patience for it. Like, I get very frustrated. <laughs> well, I mean, I still use it for different stuff, but it's just not. I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't get down like that. It's too much. It's too time consuming for me. I got like ADD or something. You know, I, I can't. <laughs> what else do you do art wise? Oh, um, well, I was doing some after school stuff, but I don't do that no more. But um, I've been trying to do this online thing with this dude, which is which is how we met, basically. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So for uh, those of you that don't know, um, Kirk and I met. Um, we had the same place of employment and we were doing after school, you know, art teaching uh, for a company. Yeah. And uh, even though we were on a different schedule, you know, as soon as I met him, we immediately hit it off. He was yeah. super cool. I like that job. So I hate that it kind of, um, kind of washed out, but that such is the life of an artist. So as long as yeah, you get the music cool what they it is. Cool yeah, yeah, they were. But I mean, I probably could go back, but I ain't, I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Doing these, I'm uh, pretty sure you could go back because yeah, everybody yeah. loves you. Well, you know, I, I got some more stuff. But I've been doing them little paint parties, like I said. But I that's about it. I'm all commissions. Um, I got a mural. I'm wrapping up. I got another one. Supposedly, they want to start in August. I don't know, though, because, you know, I don't know how these small businesses are doing really right now, you know. I got another mirror at a barbershop. He said he's going to hear as soon as this thing get up. But, I mean, I need to hit him up and see if he's ready, though. You know what I mean? And I'm really trying to show people not only that you can move a mountain, man. You know how many people told me I couldn't, what I couldn't do? Teachers that threw my art in the trash can. You know, uh, people that told me I was wasting time or that nobody was going to buy my shit. Oh, man. You know, I got people hating at what I'm doing right now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, you don't know what people tell people off the gram or how stuff be. You know, so I just, 
you know, I am the pain with the attitude. I got a story and, a, you know, a few of them. But, you know, I, why do you think... Why do you think that is, especially uh, with artists? Why is that the going theme to always try to discourage a person you see that they're artistically inclined? Why do you think that people look down on well, artists? They love okay. it, but they look up like, oh, you can't make any money. And you know what's funny to me? People always say, oh, you can't make any money from art, but they're not artistic they're not in the art world they don't know anything about anything why do you think that is for people i'm gonna say three things one no artist call themselves a starving artist that's some that's what people who are not artists that's what they doing to us probably see uh you know uh nipsey hustle out here and they could just go to our mama house or somebody and get all your work for the low you know what i'm saying yeah so Starving artist is a term that the people with the money using to get you, first of all. You know? <laughs> uh, for real. So, you know, right. then if somebody's doing the same thing they've been doing since they was a kid, don't nobody want to see that. Ain't no inspiration for nobody. That's like a slap in the face to say, man, you could have been doing what you was doing too. Or you gave up on what you was doing. People with a nine to five, right. we can attain it to them, but they don't feel like they need it. So people don't. One they don't know about. The third thing is that art is stolen and some old art. You know what I'm saying? So if, if you ain't rich or, or, or nothing to say, hoping somebody gonna buy this stuff, like you, I don't know who knows if you got a start. So now you just gonna still look at somebody else and play style and do that in their style, but you got more fans. So it's kind of like, but you got the popularity. You and make something popular and look like you started it. You know, so a lot of artists don't celebrate each other because, you know, some of these people looking for the next big thing to keep their things going because all they surviving off of is prints. Oh, and I, and I ain't did nothing else since. I ain't had a hit since like a rapper, you know, a musician. I don't know. This is just my perspective of the game. I'm just over here making these hits. I ain't had a hit since. You <laughs> I'm just over here producer, you know, and these paint parties, they paying me the same thing as to go see somebody at a concert, you know what I mean? It's the same price, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, you know, so you can't, but you can't worry about none of that. You got 600 fans, 600 followers, you got the ones who just watching and look out for the 60 who actually might want some work or want to fuck with right. you, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't trying to say it. I'm trying to say it myself, but there's some people that, you know, these, these blue pieces are bringing up some closure that money can't buy, and a psychologist might not can't either. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. I'm supposed to put your people right. We can't what, what art does, you know? Uh, it is a form of therapy for people. Um, and I think that people forget the importance of, of art, you know, right now. And I'm not just talking about, about visual art. Like, we, you know, we are the recorders of culture. You know, we bring entertainment and happiness to people. It's important. That's my two cents on it. <laughs> now, art is popping right now. Like I'm saying, there are people selling prints, and art, they made one painting. There are people online taking other people's pictures and selling them Chuck Close. They selling Chuck Close, whack all kind of people. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's why I just post videos. I just post a lot of videos. It's the work in progress. You ain't gonna, I'll tell you, I got out of college and somebody said they had my picture in their house. I said, damn, bro, what, what picture you got? Like, man, I just printed it off of Facebook. I said, God damn, this is crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> tell me your thoughts about social media are you afraid of, uh, I don't know if you found out about it um uh, it's this uh, amazing artist that I follow her name is uh Brianne James and yeah. she's on Instagram is God Talk Artist right, she used right. to live she's uh she was a Texas girl she used to live um in Houston Texas and she recently moved to Italy but right. a couple of months ago she found out that there was somebody taking I don't even know what they were doing, like taking it off the computer. Like, isn't that a, a horrible reproduction, a picture of some of her paintings as well as other um, amazing artists 
you know, on Instagram yeah. and pregnant, like on shower curtains and pillows and different. You already know that's a bad reproduction. <laughs> you just take a screen print. But they had a whole shop on Amazon. And, you know, we were protesting. And, you know, she was talking about lawyering up and all this different stuff. So I want to ask you, has that ever happened to you? Has someone stolen the work from you? Or, and how do you feel about putting your work on social media? Do you think it's a, a hindrance or something you shouldn't do? Or you just take the chance? Like, what's your, what's your stand on it? Uh, I, I think it just depends on what you're trying to do with your career. And I think it's a lot of people that's just hitting licks off of art and they not really thinking about a career. Or you can go get an art magazine right now from the from Barnes and Nobles or somewhere and and get, you know, art life or get get a good expensive one. You know? look for them on Instagram and see how many followers they got. The people that's really selling art in some man, they might have five thousand followers, three thousand followers like 1,200, and they'll be in a magazine. Or they the most reproduced picture of a cow. Or so you know what I'm saying? These people, like, that's really in, they're not that famous. So right now, these 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 these, these artists who got 80,000, 60,000 followers and stuff like that, I mean, you know, uh, you know, we got to live, keep living and seeing what's going to happen, you know? I done seen some people that was at Art Basel four years ago, and you can't find them online right now. But they ain't even making art no more. They hit them nicks, was painting on cars and doing all kind of stuff down there in Miami, but they don't know nothing about art. They don't know how to preserve the art or make their art worth that's going to survive 50 years or something. They just paint on purses or paint on people Lamborghinis, and, 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 so, and so they can't sell a painting right now. So, you know. Wow. It, it, yeah, so it's like you don't want to get out here and mess yourself up. But as far as people stealing your or reproducing your art, it's just like it's kind of like rap. Whatever you put out for printing yourself, that's going to be the back end of that game. And like I said, I don't have nobody that I can trust right now that can really keep track of some numbers. If I was really doing prints and needed, had to mail them out every day and do stuff. I done heard other artists that really take away from your work and your product and stuff like that, and that's just not something that I want to do to the people who pay me to do what I got to do right now. But it's not like I'm not ready to print. It's just, you know, I don't, I need a certain structure of teamwork that I don't have in my life right now that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get together, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I, I just feel like it's different levels of the game, and right now it ain't no rules with this art. And if you don't know about copywriting your work or licensing agreements or things like that you know then you know you're gonna get sued for trying to sell that picture of beyonce or or them shirt or them shirts you know let the her agent find out you know it's a lot of that going on so i don't i don't even paint celebrities which was kind of hard for me because when i'm painting these people you don't know if it look like them or not you know when i'm posting my pictures online you can't tell like dang who is that Oh, that's such and such, cause I they not you know what I'm saying? They're not well known, but at the same extent it's like I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? But I don't wanna be sued for if I'm gonna paint something for free and try to sell it or print it and end up getting sued on the back end, it's like that ain't, you know. Right. And you know, when you do get famous and then they start going through your stuff and be like, Hey Yeah. I mean, you that's why I, Beyonce, you weren't licensed to do that. And so now that you have thing. money, let's, let's take it's, it. Right. It's the same thing. If somebody take a, a James or anybody's painting and reproduces it without their consent, that's the same thing as painting 50 Cent and, and reproducing that and trying to sell a print. It's the, he got rights over his face just like you got rights over the work. Now, the, the thing is the in-between is having somebody that can get a 50 cent agent or somebody else, you know what I'm saying, and negotiate something where y'all could sell that together that he could use it or something. And see, that's the type of side of the game that I want to be on. But, you know, right now they're paying me to paint. You know what I'm saying? But I think I could sell art probably better than I could paint. And I'm kind of good at painting, so, you know. Well, I mean, you you talking, so, like, <laughs> you feeling in that, so. Yeah, I just. You want to still be uh, in art dealership? 
Yeah, I just know how Dallas is, and I'm, you know, I'm stuck in Dallas right now. I ain't, I don't want to really open a gallery under the, the principles that I'm gonna really need people to buy stuff to stay open. So I gotta, you know, find some type of government angle to open a gallery that's gonna serve the community or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So that I can get some fun. To... I think you'd be good at it. Hey, you set apart what's going on. Did you see that set apart by design? She said that's so important. I teach my students that at the middle school level because a lot of artists don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And this is part of the process. Thank you, set apart by design. You know, trying to put she a little bit one one of my, here in the world. She was in the art battle with me. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So, so yeah. she was in a art battle with wants you to give me the tea. Yeah. About art battle. How did you find out about it? Oh, um, I know I had somebody tagged me on something and I had been talking about painting live. I wanted to start doing live paintings and stuff. I guess I had did that to try to test myself to see, you know, because I needed to be painting around people, so stuff like that. Because I, I had this vision I was going to go on a tour, like a historical black tour and go to all the black events, college events into different places like uh you know and just paint in the middle of the street you know at the essence festival or at the uh you Love know it. Go down at the sixth street i forgot at the south by southwest so and, and some more stuff you know what i mean but uh so so the art i'm still on plan for this tour but so that art battle i had did it and it was kind of cool though but it there is no it's no prize where you win some money i think it is now but when i was doing it it wasn't you know, but it was kind of cool. It's like if you want to uh, try to do some live painting or paint in front of people, it's a good uh, experience to try to go. So know. what is it like? Do you have to um, audition to be on there or do they just go through your Instagram page? Like, how did you, did you um, fill out the application? Like, what went on? Yeah, it's kind of like you got to sign up. And then they tell you if you selected or not. And uh, so <clears throat> it's like two rounds, it's three rounds, but the first two rounds is like six artists in the first round, six artists in the second round, and the best two artists from each round go to the last round, you know, type stuff. So. Um, and it's 20 minutes, so it's 20 minute sets, right? It's 20 minutes. The first setting is 20 minutes, the second is 20 minutes. Then the third one, they might give you some extra time and switch up to something that you got to do. You like, I had a black canvas in my championship round, but you know, uh, so that was cool. And it's a bigger canvas, but uh, yeah. So the thing is, is that it's audience participation, or it's audience voting. So then, I and you really want to win to win. Because, you know, somebody could bring 10 people and those 10 people could outvote the other people that's in there. You know what I mean? You, and you more than likely are going to win that round. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody voting on who advancing. So the first time I did it, I did kind of, a, uh, kind of a political statement piece that I think people took the wrong way. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I didn't win that contest. I kind of got... He said I didn't win. By 16 people running up to me after, what are you thinking, dude? What, what, what? So I was, but then. they didn't understand what you were trying to, what you were trying to say with the political piece, right? Yeah, right, right. It kind of, I, I, I did a middle finger, but I had did it facing a flag, but I should have did it that way. So it was like, F you, I'm from Texas, but I kind of did it that way. And it looked like it was like, fuck Texas though. So I was, what were you trying to say, God, fuck the Cowboys or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, for just putting other stuff in the fuck the cowboy. <laughs> yeah, they was mad too. They was mad. Oh, they was mad. And then the second time I did it was like it was it was at a different place. But uh it was a lot of girls. I was in a round with all girls really. And they did pretty good. So I lost that. Girl power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, matter of fact, I think the last three times they did it, it's been like a girl, a female victory. I would suggest it if you're a lady, you know what I mean? 
I don't, I don't paint fast enough. However, I did third. I'm so sorry that I missed yours. Mm -hmm. um, but I've gone to two and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So for those of you that are out there, um, if you do get a chance after all this stuff is over, I think they should do a live one. I they think that would be so good. Now. It's live now. Now they're doing it live. Are you serious? Yeah, you can sign up for the live battle. I didn't even know. Yeah, I haven't did it. If they if I look through it and they and they giving away some money, I do it just to do it because it's kind of fun. But I'm saying like you know, yeah, I, I I can't you know what I mean you know people. I mean if they come with some sponsorship, like that, what I was saying, man, they be needing. To, I had to drive out there. I need a gift card or something, some paint brushes. Uh, I had to bring my brushes, but you know, they get a, let me get something. <laughs> no, no, my bad. But yeah. No, like so. Are you saying that the person that wins, they don't get any, they don't get any money, any nothing? Do they? Or well, the okay. Where do we get? It? Whatever when you enter, whatever you create becomes the property of Art Battle. If they sell your work, you get a profit of your work. Y'all gonna split the sales on your work if you do sell your work. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. So whatever you make in the first round. You leave it there, it's going to be up for auction. They're going to send you something if it sells. If it don't sell, it still remain the art, property of art battle and somebody private art collection across the world. They got an artwork Kirk over there with a middle finger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just in there thinking about <laughs> No, real talk. No. Real talk. So, so that's another, you know, everybody is a lot yeah. of different games going around. <laughs> You know, and I would love to be on the side of Fart Battle. They need to come get me to be a sponsorship. If I could get some of them pieces up out the collection, I think some of them artists going to be somebody one day. You know what I'm saying? That's a great way to go around the globe and find underground artists who, in the next 10 years, they work going to be worth something. And they can give you some work just to be in the I think, I think the concept of it is amazing. I love it. Yeah. However, I feel like the winners of each battle should get something like come on now yeah, yeah. i mean it's cool though it's a great it's, it's a cool experience you know what i'm saying but yeah you know you got to read them fine lines and really see what's going on right we're definitely great uh like you said great exposure there's so many talented people out here you know um so it's great exposure for that and it's a uh, great entertainment i had so much fun going around that little circle looking at everybody's you know, so did you did you yeah. take impromptu nah, like both cool. times, cool. or yeah. did you have a plan going into it when you did your work for oh, our band? Yeah. I man, I practice. Anytime I do something like if I do a paint party or or something like that, nine times out of ten I'm a, I'm gonna be and did the painting once already. You know. I had watched that Bob Ross documentary too. I thought I was the only person that did that till I watched that documentary and they was like, so he used to do that. Before he went on TV, he had been and did the painting twice. So that by the time he done did it on TV, he going, you know, it's already in his head or something. And then okay. go watch the film or the footage of him doing the video, like he, you know, playing, like he in a ball game for real. I be doing that type of stuff. I go watch my videos and, you know, try to, see what's the best part of when I be painting. I think it's when I be putting the eyes in there, people like to see that because I think it makes the picture come alive. It definitely does. Shout out to Bob Ross, man. I used to watch that brother. Man, I used to run home when I was in college. <laughs> he came on, at, on PBS at a certain time. Yeah. Um, I think it was like 1 o'clock when I was in college and I went to TWU and I'd be coming from my art class. It was up on top of this hill. Man, your girl be running with a big old <laughs> art board, all the stuff in her hand, uh, trying to get home in time so I could catch that PBS special. I never watched it. I never watched this show. It, I, it I, mean, so cool, it, man. I knew who he was, but I never I wasn't in the art. I was trying to get girls and go to the mall and do everything but paint and draw. I ain't lying. I used to draw real good letters. 
you know, I used to share letters in high school. I used to do calligraphy and make all kind of nice letters trying to, Wow. Know. So do you think that that helped you for what you're doing right now, doing the lettering? Yeah, it helped me be able to talk to ladies and do some other things that I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, baby, uh, baby, uh, you know, when I started doing tattoos or was trying to do, I, it did, I, I could see, you know, some things, but. Well, I'm glad you uh, carved out some time to talk to me today. I appreciate it, brother. Yeah. I thought so, it was going to be a, a cool interview. Yeah. I hope they like it. You know, maybe they could understand a little bit more about a painter out here, you know. Yeah, you gave some uh, some really good tips. For those of you that are not following this talented brother, uh, you can catch him on Instagram. So your name on Instagram is Kirk yeah. Wade. Right. It's Kirk Squirts on Instagram, K-I-R-K-S-W-O-R-K. -R you know what I'm saying? The Bachelor of Arts, you know, the Black Bob Ross. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The underground artist, you know what I mean? I got a lot of different aliases out here, but I will pull up on you and paint something. You know what I'm Art saying? Work. Art work, Kirk. Art work, Kirk. Work. For the record, teamwork, you know what I'm saying? I'm the work in progress. You know, we just trying to make it happen. My whole life is an art show. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere I go, it's an art show. It's always a party I with see. the famous artists. You know what I'm saying? It's just how I live. Everything I got is art. You know what I mean? I it's all I'm brush. I see what you're doing. So you want to tell... Um, I got a YouTube and all of that. Too. You got some good footage on there. Good yeah. Look. I try. I try to put... Mm -hmm. Get some good... You know, they say I got good content. I just got to keep it going. You know, it be hard. Yeah, you do. So, what's your other page? I know you got another page. What the paint parties page? Yeah, I got a. Yeah, F so it's paint, it's paint parties, right? That's on Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah. So y'all need yeah, you know it's on Instagram. Like, this quarantine not gonna last for long, man. You can come out That's here. That's how you can book me to pull up on you. Mm -hmm. Right. So paint parties. Kirk's work. Yeah. And Kirk's work. Y'all check it yeah. out on Instagram. What? Kirk, I want to thank you for being on Artist to Artist. Already. It was my pleasure. My second chat. I know you got plenty of stuff to do. I might ask you to come back on here again and be nosy. I got All some right. simple work. Cool. If I get one of these murals going, you know, I might we can go live from there or something. Maybe I can show some techniques with some house paint. You know I think I mean? that would be so cool. All right. So I'm definitely down for it. I hope you have a good rest of the day. Stay safe out there. Same to you. All, All right. Be right. cool. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Artwork Kirk. Thanks for tuning in to Artist to Artist. See you next time.